Hello and welcome back to Just an Ordinary Girl 46. Tonight I would like to discuss with you a book that I read on Sunday, November 13th and finished on Monday, November 14th. It is called A Brother's Journey by Richard B. Peltzer. This book was very gripping as it tells of a story of five little boys and their mentally challenged, abusive, alcoholic mother. They lived in Daly, California, and it takes place in the early 70s. This was Richard's re recollection. His other brother's names were David, who's the famous author of a book called A Child Called It, and he has also penned four other books. Ross, Scott, and Keith the Baby. Their father's name was Stephen, whom wasn't around the boys much. I don't know if they were divorced, but they were definitely living separately. So he starts the book out by talking about his older brother named David. Their mother, Catherine, told all the other children that they were to call him It. It was abused from about the age of four until the age of 11 or 12 when he was taken out of the home and put into foster care. It suffered so much in such a short time. He was made to puke and eat his own vomit. It was made to only eat the scraps which someone, which sometimes was spoiled food that wasn't even fit for a dog to eat. He was made to eat underneath the kitchen table while the other four boys and the mother ate at the dining room table. He was physically, mentally, and emotionally abused day after day. His mother would punch him, kick him, hit him with objects, starve him, and made him live in a dark, cold, damp, musty-smelling basement. His bed was an old cot, and his clothes were nothing more than dirty rags. She even made it hold his arm over the stove once to see his flesh bubble as part of her sick games. The last time David was abused, she almost killed him with a carving knife. She was waving it over him, demanding him to do his chores faster and faster, when all of a sudden Richard recalls David holding his hand to his chest. Their mother grabs his arm and leads him into the bathroom, where she opens his flesh to determine the depth of the cut and instead of getting him medical help, she stuffed dirty rags in the wounds, made him get dressed, and go on about her day. He was never medically treated. For all she cared, he could have died in that basement from those wounds. Richard recalls David trying to clean the oozing wounds in the dark, cold basement over the washing machine. It was made to go to school in his filthy, dirty clothes, and apparently the school nurse noticed his abuse and asked him what had happened. David told her everything. Everyone knew she was an unfit parent, but it wasn't until the school stepped in shortly after the knifing incident that he was taken away around the age of 11. Their mother, Catherine, had a way of always making the boys sort of gang up on each other or be against one another. This was one of her sick games. Back then, when David was living in the basement, she sort of always believed Richard's tales. And from Richard's own mouth, he says, I was very much turned against David, and I would lie to make a lie, I would lie about him to or make stuff up just to get him in trouble. Richard also admitted that he enjoyed watching the degradation of his older brother, hearing his cries and punishments. But he knew he would take place of it once his brother was gone. You would think the authorities would have taken the other boys after the removal of David, but they didn't, and she was never charged. The abuse started for Richard, who is the author of this book. He was only five years old at the time his abuse really started to get bad. She did the same things to him as was done to it, except he wasn't made to sleep in the basement as it did. Richard lived his entire childhood in this living hell. 
Everyone knew when he would go to school in the same dirty clothes and shoes time after time. His clothes were small, his clothes were small and his shoes gave him blisters as his mother did not care. He was now not part of her family. And at a very young, tender age, I think around eight, Richard was made to wash his own clothes while she only washed his brother's clothes. She always told him he was not part of her family. This woman would drink vodka from the time she awoke until the time she went to sleep. As years went by, Richard, Richard's abuse got worse. There were several times where she almost killed him. She changed her patterns of abuse the older he got. She got away with it all, from slamming his hand repeatedly into a cupboard door to being beat over the head with a cast iron skillet, her kicking him in the head and chest to stomping on his face, making him drink Tabasco sauce until he puked. The horrors in this house was incredible. She used one of his older brothers named Scott as she used to use Richard against him. It. Whatever Scott would say, like, Richard cussed at me or hit me, it would sure be a beating that night for Richard. She used to make Richard run around the house as she chased him from room to room before he was allowed to go to school. He tried to make obstacles in his bedroom as to slow her down, but she eventually broke and threw out all the furniture except his bunk bed and a ratty dresser. Richard was made to not eat before his younger brother Keith started and had to be done eating before Keith finished. At Christmas, she would get the other kids toys, but only got Richard a couple magazines. And then she said to him that Santa wasn't real and that she bought them for him so that he wouldn't cry while her boys opened up their presents. I tell you, this kid suffered so much abuse just like David did. I'm not telling every detail here, but if you are interested in this book, it sure was a read that you couldn't put down. The only thing I kind of wish I knew was how he ended up getting away from her or what happened to her in the end. We know from this book that he grew from a beat-down little red-head freckled-faced boy into a 15-year-old juvenile who finally realized that he was strong enough to fight back on his own. He had to let go of the fear and longing for the love of his mother that he never received. He decided to face her now more like a man, but we were left to wonder what happened next. If you enjoyed my synopsis of this book, please let me know in the comments below. And if, if there's another book that you would like me to read and do a synopsis on, please let me know that as well. Thank you so much for coming over and watching my video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.